Sleepyhead and Oscar. Where, where there are, well, Sleepyhead was the first Oscar, was its successor. They're projects so that if you use a CPAP machine, you can read the data that gets written to their SD cards. So, first off, which, which is Sleepyhead, the older of the two projects, software for SD cards, and it, uh, the project was discontinued effectively in February of this year uh, by uh, its creator. Can you imagine what CPAP is? Well, uh, in this case, continuative, con uh, continuous positive airway pressure. It's a machine that uh, can be used uh, by people with sleep apnea to help them breathe when they sleep. And so uh, it's a, also included in uh, Debian and Ubuntu in package form. And uses Qt. You can the, the downloads available Windows, Mac, and Linux. And uh, what is Oscar? Well, when uh, the creator stopped the project, Oscar is uh, the successor, also available uh, in I think it's GitLab. Not yet packaged in uh, any of the major distros, according to the quick check I made this evening at around six fifteen. The night is young. <laughs> I didn't see any significant differences between the two when I checked, except uh, Sleepyhead has a far nicer logo and uh, icon. The Sleepyhead one is uh, so much cuter. So, first off, what is logged by the machines? So, modern machines will all log at the very least how much it has been used and the settings. The more advanced machines, well, you can get some, some of the machine's interpretations of the airflow in addition to uh, what it's set to, how long it's been re you've been using it. So why would the machines actually have this log? Well, important for people who aren't in Ontario, how long has the machine been used for? In the United States, some of the insurance companies will only pay for the machines on a rental basis if they see you're using it for more than a certain amount per night. Same sort of things with truck drivers, where they might only be allowed to drive if they use it for at least a certain amount of time per night. For the more clinical uses, well, you can get some ideas to if the settings are good for the user, and other things like, okay, does the person just sleep with their mouth open, leaking all the air, but they have a mask that only covers their nose and not the mouth? They're not getting much help from the machine if everything comes out their mouth. <laughs> so why check it if you're not uh, the respiratory therapist? Well, in some cases, it's just plain old curiosity. After all, it's there. Why not? A more uh, useful use, perhaps, is again looking for the air leaks. And then there's also the, I feel like crap this morning. <laughs> Let's see if I can blame it on uh, not breathing while I'm sleeping. <laughs> because, well, <laughs> so uh, where is the data logged? Well, most machines would actually be to an SD card. Some of the older machines and the more machines in more clinical settings, they'll actually have serial cables to hook up to computers for real time monitoring and setting changes. Some of the newer machines will ac actually have an, the, a little SIM chip, a little SIM card to do cell. My machine at home apparently has a TELUS SIM in it. And some of the other newer ones use Bluetooth. And so important thing is Sleepyhead, Oscar, it, they, are, they use SD cards. And they strongly recommend that you slide the right protect to write protected before you plug them into your computer. Because some OSs and some machines have a little issue where the OS writes a little data to it, and uh, the machine doesn't like it. So outside of this, how can the data be viewed? Well, you've got vendor-specific proprietary Windows applications that are meant for a clinical use that show everything and let you reconfigure them and everything. But in these days, they've also added vendor-specific mobile applications that might to listen to your machine over Bluetooth or get the data from the vendor's servers that was sent over uh, with cell phones. And same for the web portals. They're pretty much the same as the applications. 
they don't have much by way of content. So now that I've gone through all of this, any questions? I mean, since I brought my computer and got it hooked up, I can also show you some of the UI. It's the same UI regardless of which application you're using. Just uh, I've got Oscar running at the moment. Yep. Is it common that, they, that all of these units use the same data format? Oh, of course not. Every ven so every one of the manufacturers has their own specific data format, and it varies based upon the machine. No, because you know you get newer machines, new stuff gets added to it, so they yeah add more. They change the formats. A lot of the formats uh, inside Oscar and Sleepyhead were actually reverse engineered based off of dumps from these SD cards. Yeah. Do you personally find the data useful in what ways? As a list of imaginable ones, but for you, what, what is it? Uh, so it depends upon when you're talking about. These days, it mainly is actually just looking at error leak. Because it, what commonly happens is I'll get a mask, I'll s start using it, it's fine, but you know, the headgear might wear out and it slips a little out of place and it starts leaking a little extra air overnight. And it doesn't work quite as well when it's leaking. Yes? You mentioned that some of the proprietary ones will allow you to change the parameters. Can I program my friend, friend Ken's CPAP machine to check in that? <laughs> no. <laughs> but first off, uh, Sleepyhead and Oscar are read only. But you know, if you know the model, you can uh, look up the clinical manual online, and but you need physical access for that one. <laughs> yes, Miles. Have you done any like that interaction to see if like temperature of your room has adjusted your sleep schedule or anything like that? Uh, so that gets a little beyond what's part of this uh, project. I mean, I haven't gotten quite that far into. Uh, the quantified self aspects of things. Uh, there are actually sleep trackers out there that do that sort of thing if you're willing to pay a big pile of cash and use their proprietary apps and all that, but uh, I haven't actually tracked that. The only temperature setting that gets tracked for me is uh, the temperature in my heated uh, tubing. Yeah? What language is this written? Okay, right, uh, C++. Yes? To what degree can you get the data out of it to do like other things? Like is, is it mostly generating graphs and, uh, and reports or can you get statistical material? That so it generates, so I'll actually just quickly go exit out of this and right, so uh, it generates some of its own little uh, statistics and overviews. Okay, let me just uh, see about which, ah, here it is. Yeah, it's, it sets it up as a separate screen altogether as opposed to mirroring. So we've got overview like this and statistics. I think I can, exp I might be able to export a report. Oh, they actually did put that one in there. Cool. I don't want to do that. Okay, because, yeah, yeah, there's export data. So, yeah. Yes? Um, is Oscar specific to CPAP data, or could you also kind of stream others? Well, it is specifically designed around uh, CPAPs, BiPAPs, ASVs, and related machines. Is it specific to the device? Or? So, there are multiple uh, manufacturers, multiple formats and uh, it can read those, but that's what it's specific to, task specific. Yes? Um, the CPAP machine manufacturers, are they, uh, do they cooperate with the people making them? Uh, so I don't know about Oscar, but I remember from the past with uh, some of the earlier days of Sleepyhead, it depended upon the manufacturer. Okay, I've hit the 10 minute mark. <laughs>